एल्बो स्टिफनेस एल्बो इज अ जॉइंट विच इज अ वेरी कॉमन जॉइंट विच इज इन्वॉल्व इन स्टिफनेस इट्स अ हिंज जॉइंट एंड इट्स अ कंस्ट्रेंट जॉइंट बाय नेचर एनी इंजरी और एनी स्ट्रेस टू द एल्बो मे लीड टू स्टिफनेस एल्बो स्टिफनेस इज वेरी कॉमन आफ्टर एनी इंजरी एंड इट्स ऑल्सो कॉमन आफ्टर एनी सर्जिकल इंटरवेंशन now the causes of stiffness of elbow can be intrinsic that is intraarticular adhesions intraarticular loose bodies synovitis arthritis or bony ankylosis that is they, these are all intrinsic causes that means they are inside the elbow joint then you have extrinsic causes that means the causes which are outside the elbow joint which may be capsular contractures heterotrophic ossifications or ossification in the collateral ligaments so the elbow can be stiff because of intrinsic or extrinsic causes now what is a normal range of elbow so normal range of elbow is 0 to about 150 to 160 degrees but when we call the elbow to be functionally stiff elbow so as per large series it has been defined that the functional range of the elbow is 30 degrees to 130 degrees so that means that if your elbow has a range of 30 degrees to 130 degrees we can accept it and usually we don't need to do any procedure to increase the motion because 90% of your activity you will be able to do with a 30 degrees to 130 degrees range of motion also you should have around 50 degrees of pronation and 50 degrees of supination so this movement is 50 degrees and 50 degrees of supination and 50 degrees of pronation is also the range which is in acceptable limit so if your extension is less is less than 30 degrees means if you are not able to extend your elbow beyond 50 degrees or 60 degrees it is considered to be a stiffness in extension and if you are not able to flex your elbow beyond 90 degrees it is called considered as flex uh, stiffness in flexion so friends usually stiff elbow is a sequel of any injury or any surgery normally in initial phases you must give the patient a conservative trial so what are the conservative modalities that you can offer to the patient the first and foremost thing is an active physiotherapy you can ask the patient to actively flex and actively extend the elbow so active physiotherapy is one thing then if the patient has got particular restriction in flexion or extension you can give passive splints so suppose if the patient is not gaining adequate extension you can give a extension sort of splint and you can dynamize the splint that you can move the splint and then you can lock it in extension same you can do in flexion as well so these are called as a turn buckle splints which can be adjusted in flexion and extension and then can be kept in that particular uh, position for a long time also you can do a, on machine you can cause uh, do a continue passive motion that is called as a cpm machine so on cpm machine also you can mobilize the patient to gain the movement very occasionally we can do a serial casting of the elbow to actually increase the range in a particular extension or particular flexion so serial casting can also be used to increase the flexion usually these all therapies work till 6 months of duration once the stiffness is beyond 6 months any kind of these physical therapies are not going to work and then you will need to do surgical intervention in this particular subset of patients now regarding the surgical intervention you must analyze what kind of stiffness you are dealing with if you are dealing with an intrinsic elbow stiffness you can consider an arthroscopic approach but if the uh, if the stiffness has got any extrinsic component it is better to utilize an 
open elbow arthrolysis for the same. So if you have any calcific deposits or if you have any heterotrophic calcification, you tend to do more of a open kind of a procedure to increase the range. So you can you have to do an open arthrolysis of the elbow. So if it is an intrinsic, you, you can do a elbow arthroscopic arthrolysis. Elbow arthroscopy arthrolysis is a technically demanding procedure and it is usually indicated in a very small subset of patients with a definite indication. In rest of the patient, we can do this open arthrolysis procedure. Now there are different techniques which are described. The most common technique which is described is a medial approach. So the medial approach you can do with or without exploration of ulnar nerve and then you can release the anterior capsule out of it you can do a uh, periosteal elevation on the uh, forearm as well as the arm side and you can release the posterior part of the medial collateral ligament mind you you should not erase the anterior part of the medial collateral ligament because that gives the stability to the elbow so you can release the posterior collateral ligament and you can release the posterior capsule to increase the range. This technique was described by Hotchkiss. Then there is a lateral column technique which is described in which you can approach the same on the lateral side on and you go anterior and posterior to the lateral epicondyle to do a release. Occasionally in some particular circumstances you may need to do both medial as well as lateral approach to achieve the best results. There are some other techniques which are described in which you can do posterior midline. You can do, go through the triceps in the midline and do a release of the additions of the posterior olecranon, make a hole in the uh, olecranon fossa and then you can do limited medial and lateral approaches as well. So whatever the technique you, uh, you use, you can achieve a good range after these procedures. The most important thing is you need to do a lot of physiotherapy and you need to counsel to the patient that you need to do a lot of physiotherapy after these procedures also. I usually start physical therapy immediately after these procedures. You can put the patient on a CPM machine also and you can give a turn button splint as well. Usually I like to give all these patients indomethacin to prevent or heterotrophic ossification in the post-operative phase in the dose of around 25 mg two or three times a day. Also these patients should be regularly follow up with their range of motion because the recurrent uh, heterotrophic ossification is also very common and re-onset of stiffness is also very common phenomenon. So friends, if you have any questions regarding elbow stiffness or elbow arthrofibrosis, you can write on the comment box. Thank you.